What up, guys? The Bench Buddies are back with our week four NFL preview and picks. As always, I got Ethan joining me this week to break down this week's games. But before we get into it, we got to talk about last week, our little betting section, the locks of the week. And man, I had a great run, five and one last week. Just Houston, the two and a half. It didn't just sell. Man, they just didn't even show up. Yeah, not at all. Great week, though, five and one. Uh, for me, on the other hand, not a great start. Two and four on the week. Uh, that brings the record to eight, eight and two. So sitting at five hundred. Uh, if you were here at the beginning of the year, you'd know this is not what we're looking for. So yeah, uh, Houston, Minnesota over forty six. If the Texans would have scored any points, this would have hit. Uh, New Orleans, obviously, uh, logic was not uh, on my side there. Mm. Vegas minus five, another bad pick. Uh, and then Arizona plus three. But uh, you know what? B. John Robinson punched it in. Uh, so we'll take our wins and we'll get over our losses here uh, in a new week four here. Um, yeah. To get those on. yeah. And then, you know, here we are week four. Obviously you have the game tonight. You'll probably see this video after the game's been started or over. Um, so you got the Cowboys, but I, I don't have anything till Sunday. And I got the Falcons and the Bengals covering. Uh, I have some overs in the Tampa Philly and the Washington Arizona game. I think there's going to be lots of points scored this week. And the Chargers are going to cover at home against the Chiefs. I feel like that's just a three-point game right there. Three or four-point game. Uh, and Buffalo and Baltimore, I think that's going to be an easy over. I think the defenses, it doesn't matter how good they've been. Um, this is just a straight matchup of some good teams. And I think, you know, it's going to be one of those higher-scoring matchups. And as for me, my gambling my gambling locks this week, uh, as you said, Dallas minus five and a half tonight. Uh, all of these picks are are going to be road dogs. So we got Minnesota plus two and a half at, at Green Bay. Jacksonville plus six at Houston. Steelers plus one and a half at Indy. Denver plus seven and a half at the Jets. And then my only pick that is not a spread bet is the Minnesota Green Bay game over 43 and a half. I think this is a lock uh, as well with Minnesota playing the way they have. And with Green Bay and Malik Willis playing the way they have as well. Yeah, and then here we are. And just the straight up picks, not a good week for either of us, both under 500. And, you know, that's just what happens when a lot of favorites lose. Um, and that just was our case this week. Obviously, you got the Indy game right and the Pittsburgh game right, where I got the Philly and Baltimore game right. But other than that, it wasn't a good week for us. No, not a good week at all. Um, as we talked about earlier with the Minnesota Houston upset. Uh, so obviously we had that. I mean, just plenty of upsets tonight or last week. Um, as you can see, none of us were expecting that. Uh, but we got to flip a page here and it starts now, Zach. Yeah, so. it is. It is starting now. Cowboys, Giants, huge game. Not really so much for the Giants because, you know, they're kind of expected to be here. But huge game for the Cowboys. Hopefully they win. Um, not just because I'm rooting for them, because I picked them. But I just hope that this team gets good again. And I, I don't know if that makes logical sense, but Mike McCarthy's already on the hot seat. They have no run game. Dak and CeeDee possibly beefing on the sidelines. After three games, this Cowboys team isn't like your typical Cowboys team where they start out hot, go into the playoffs 12-5 and five and fizzle out there. But maybe this team just doesn't have enough juice like we've seen in the past. Not much else to say here. I, I do like the Cowboys in this game. If they don't win this game, there will be a lot of doubt and questions arising in that locker room. Uh, Jerry Jones has already taken some blame, and we'll see how much more blame he can actually handle here. Yeah, then moving over to Sunday, biggest game for the NFC North this week, obviously. You got the Vikings and the Packers, and I'm sure the Lions and the Bears are rooting for the Packers in this one, just so they can get closer in that NFC North. And obviously I'm taking my Packers because what they've done with Malik Willis the last two weeks, uh, especially last week in Tennessee, I didn't see that coming. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. The system in place for Malik Willis only a month into the season is great. Now, I think Jordan Love is projected to play in this one, but let's say he does not. I think the Packers still have a good fighting chance as long as they don't get down early. If they get down early, then you can probably chalk up a Vikings W. Yeah, and the Vikings uh, really made a statement the this to start the year. Uh, in most projections, all the smart people had the Vikings finishing last in the North, in the NFC North, and here they are with a 3-0 start, uh, beating up on some really good teams, and, and here they go in a chance to 
uh, win their first divisional game, I believe, uh, in Green Bay. And this is going to be, like you said, one of the best games of the 1 o'clock slate. Uh, Sam Darnold has been playing like a stud. Uh, I mean, this is just going to be a great game. And the Vikings offense and defense, they've they just been playing so well on both sides of the ball uh, that I got to go with the Vikings here. Yeah, and then a huge NFC South game. I'm going with the Falcons because I think this team turned a page last week. Um, you know, even after that loss, I still think that this Falcons team is a good team. You know, they competed with the Chiefs, had that one, one maybe a pass interference that should have been called, um, so on and so forth. But you got to put that behind you, like you said earlier, turn the page to a new week. And if you want to show that you are the best team at NFC South, you got to win this game because the Saints through three weeks have been really good. Even last week in a not good performance, they still almost won because uh, of that defense. And I think Kirk and the boys, this is going to be a big game uh, for them. And I think Kirk's going to have a big day and lead them to a win. Yeah, see, I think this will be a defensive battle. And I think the run game with Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algier uh, combined with the threat of Kirk Cousins airing it out uh, will we'll do it for the Saints defense this week. And I think this is really the first week we'll actually see this Atlanta offense passing offense uh, in rhythm. So it's gonna be, it's really exciting. A lot of people, uh, I think both of us picked the Falcons to win the NFC South. Uh, so it's going to be a good matchup here, and we're going to take the Falcons in this one as well. Yeah, and then I wouldn't have said it's a big game here for the Bengals in week four, but they are 0-3, and, and the Panthers are 1-2. and two, And if you would have told me the Panthers are better than the Bengals, I would have never said anything because I projected the Bengals go 14-3 and three this year. So the Bengals have to win out for me, for my project prediction to happen. Um, and I think they're going to at least get me one win here hopefully on the road against the Panthers. But if they don't win this one, um, yeah, there might be some changes this offseason. Yeah, and it could start with uh, the head coaching job with Zach Taylor. We don't really know uh, how well he can coach. This is, uh, I mean, the offense has a lot of weapons, but they aren't very buttoned up. And it seems to, he seems to be losing uh, control of the locker room a little bit. Uh, but the Panthers little bit of boost of adrenaline here with taking over for Bryce Young. Uh, a lot of fun new energy for the Panthers, and this would be a fun upset if they could take on the, the Bengals and beat them at home, uh, especially as a Steelers fan. But I am going to take the Bengals here. And then a big game for both these teams because whoever loses this one is going to be one and three, and that's not the start that I think you would have predicted for any of these teams. I'm going with the Bears here at home, plain and simple. I think the Bears have more talent on the offensive side of the ball, and I think the defenses are both comparable to each other um, just because I think, you know, if Keenan Allen does play in this one, uh, he is projected to play. I think the Bears are going to pull away late, and I don't think the Rams, they're going to be coming off that cloud nine victory over the Niners last week, and I think they're going to be a little hungover um, in the first and second quarter, so give me the Bears here. Yeah, I think this is that's where the they really start to gain momentum. Uh, for the Rams uh, with that big fourth quarter comeback. Uh, I think they have their identity on offense to run the ball and depend on Stafford and that defense. So give me the Rams here on the road. The Bears haven't looked good at all. And I mean, their defense is still good. And Caleb Williams has looked good, has looked better every week. Uh, but that's just not enough for me to trust a rookie quarterback against uh, this tough Rams team. Uh, even if they're injured, they're still – Matthew Stafford led, and that's about as gritty as it gets. So give me the Rams here. And then I'm going with the Texans here. Um, nothing much to say on this team except they're play clearly the better team. I mean, even last week, I don't even I, – I think you can throw both of last week out for both these teams here. The Texans on paper should take it to the Jaguars. I'm, I think that might be an honorable mention, the minus six for me at least. Um, I just think that Stroud's going to be pissed off and have a good game. Yeah, I think he's going to have a good game too, uh, but I'm going to take the Jags here. They got to get their first win sometime, and I think this is a great time. It's a little trap game. Uh, both teams coming off very embarrassing losses. You'd think uh, this is not the time where the Texans drop a game where they should win, uh, which is why I'm actually picking the Jags. Uh, we're going something different here, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, don't put your money on this game unless you have the money for it. So there's your advice. Yeah, and then obviously it's a big game for you. So, you know, you might not like me here. I am taking the Steelers. It's the first time this year I've taken the Steelers. And mm. I just think that if Anthony Richardson is 
struggling against the Packers defense. This offense still isn't in sync after three weeks. And Alec Pierce has been the guy, uh, not Pittman, not Adonai Mitchell. Even Downs last week in his first game didn't have a good showing. Um, they're going to have problems with the Steelers' defense, and I think this is going to be a defensive game. Give me an ugly 18-13 to 13 Steelers win. Yeah, uh, got that one right. Not sure about the score, but you're very close. I think the under will cash. Uh, everything was just about on target. That's just, how, that's just how these games are, especially with the Steelers coming into Indy. Indy always plays pretty well. Uh, but, however, I've been to, I think, two or three games now in Indianapolis, uh, Steelers games in Indianapolis, and I'd say it's about 70% Steelers fans and 30% Colts fans in there, so it could get loud, very ugly for the Colts offense. Yeah, and then you talk about very ugly is the Broncos offense, besides last week, I guess. I mean, they took it to the Bucks. I don't see a repeat performance. That's why I'm taking the Jets. Seven and a half is a little concerning. Um, I would like it at seven if I was going to bet it. I just don't know about that half point. But the Jets on paper, yet again, we're talking about on paper, should blow this team out of the water. Even with the injuries on defense the Jets have had these recent weeks, they still find ways and guys to produce. And Rodgers is only going to get better in time with this offense on the field. So give me the Jets. Yeah, give me the Broncos here in the upset. I mean, I don't know if they're going to win. I am going to pick them to win because uh, they, they've looked a lot better. Uh, but that seven and a half is just it's just way too big of a number uh, with the Jets. I feel like it's very inflated. Like the Jets uh, had a big win last week against a tough, uh, not so tough Patriots team. Uh, and then the Broncos with a big win. Uh, I just think this is the perfect time where you go ahead and beat the sports book and you take the Broncos here. Yeah. And then a big game here for both these squads in the NFC Bucks, Eagles, obviously Eagles and Saquon led the team is in every single game because of him. And we can see why the Eagles went out and got Saquon. Uh, Cause if that's, if they don't have Saquon, they might be one and two, uh, maybe even zero and three at this point, just because they really need a good running back. Then the Bucks coming off an ugly loss and I'm going with the team coming off an ugly loss versus an ugly win. Uh, Cause the Bucks have something to prove this year and the NFC South is going to be a little bit better than it was last year. So they're going to have to keep winning if they want to win the NFC South. Yeah, uh, the Eagles are in major, have a little bit of uh, some injury problems uh, with A.J. Brown, and there's there's more guys just not coming to my head right now. But I, I just think the this is a great game. This is a great time for the Bucks to come back after a tough loss in which they really shouldn't have lost. And this is a rematch of that playoff game last year, and I believe in the wild card round where the Bucks took out the Eagles. So... Yeah, I, I just like the books a lot and question marks surviving or surrounding the Eagles. Uh, I do think Tampa Bay will win this game pretty thoroughly on the at home here. They move into the four o'clock slate. You got commanders and cardinals. And as much as I want to take the commanders here, I am going to take the cardinals at home. Uh, I think they're a good team. I think, like I said, this will be a high scoring game, probably 35 31, something along those lines. Cause the defenses aren't the best here in this one, but these offenses are pretty explosive. Um, and I expect a big day from Kyler and Jaden Daniels. Uh, but give me the Cardinals at home. I just think that, you know, a, a home game is still a home game in the NFL, no matter who's playing. Yeah, and I'm with you there. I, I like the Cardinals here. It, I didn't really think too much on taking the Commanders, but I could see a world where the Commanders do win. I mean, a very impressive win. And a very impressive night by Jaden Daniels last Monday against the Bengals. Uh, but with that being said, I really like what the Cardinals have been doing this year. And a 1-2 and two record is kind of surprising to me with the way they have played. Uh, so give me the Cardinals here. Uh, need this win. And I think home, 4 o'clock is late. This is, this is where they get their uh, much-needed victory here. And then you talk about a much-needed victory. Definitely are the 49ers here. And I think this is going to be an ugly game. In the second half, I think they're going to get off to a slow start because Jared Mayo or Gerard Mayo is going to have a good game plan against the Niners. They've kind of been exposed on film in these last few weeks, and I think the Niners are going to be pissed off and come out with a good game. And I think Jordan Mason, Juwan Jennings, doesn't matter who's out there for Brock Purdy, he's going to find his way to ball out, and I think that's going to be the case here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Not, my, not much else to be said. Give me the Niners here. 
uh, at home, especially. It's just not not going to be the game I'm tuning into once uh, four twenty five comes around. Yeah, and I can see why you want to watch this Browns Raiders yeah. game. There's nothing but better. Not really much to be said about this one. Two teams playing pretty bad football right now. Give me the Raiders at home. They got better talent on the field. Yeah, give me the Raiders. Uh, AFC North has not been playing well besides my Steelers. So I'm really hoping that continues. Uh, every week that the Browns lose just makes me a little bit more happy. So go Steelers and give me the Raiders here at home. And now this is the game I'm sure you were talking about here. Chiefs, Chargers, big game. And I said it before we started making this video. I think the Chargers, you know, they definitely have a chance to win this game because if they can play their brand of football, Jim Harbaugh football, run the ball every single play, seven, eight minutes off the clock, that's the best defense against Patrick Mahomes' teams. If you keep the ball, you can go down there, score touchdowns, seven, eight minutes. And Mahomes, let's say, only gets a field goal out of it. You do the same thing again. Before you know it, you're already almost halfway through the second quarter, and Mahomes has only been on the field twice. And they have, what, three, maybe ten points to show for it. I am going to take the Chiefs here. I still think you can't bet against the Super Bowl champions until they lose. So I'm going to still go with the Chiefs. But if Kelsey gets involved in this one, then it might be a problem for the Chargers. Yeah, uh, the Chargers always seem to play the Chiefs very tough. So it's it's hard to bet on this game. Uh, I do like the Chiefs to win outright. Uh, however, I think seven points is pretty high. I feel like three points is closer to around the right number. Chargers coming off a tough loss last week, looking to rebound at home. I mean, there's not much else to be said. They're, they're going to bring their A game, uh, especially with Jim Harbaugh coming in. They're going to bring their A game ready for a 3-0 undefeated Patrick Mahomes squad. And I think it'll be a tough game, and, and they're gonna they're gonna play really well, and gonna turn some eyes. But uh, I do like the Chiefs here. Uh, Rishi Rice with Pacheco coming out uh, has proven himself to be a real weapon in this offense. So look, uh, I think they'll look to him this week, and I think he will dominate. Yeah, they move into Sunday Night Football. Probably a better game. Uh, couldn't pick a better game week four, I guess. Bills undefeated. Ravens mm -hmm. one and two. Both with something to prove. Bills in prime time on the road proving that they can be the best team in the AFC this year. Where the Ravens need this win at home to prove that they are still the best team in the AFC. Uh, besides the Chiefs, obviously. Uh, that could be their best competitor. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think Lamar and this team, you know, the first few weeks, what? They lost by a toe the first week. Um, yeah. Week two is all right. Week three is all right. You know, they get the first win, but... I think now that they finally have played with all together with Derrick Henry, um, the Rashad Bateman's actually been playing really well. Uh, I think this team is ready to take that next step to become a really good team this year. Yeah, and great points there. Uh, Bills, a lot of people would say, you know, not the best schedule to start, uh, not the hardest schedule. Uh, so a 3 0 start is expected. So this is a big game, a big prove it game for Buffalo. I would say this is a more of a prove-it game for the Ravens, but we already know what the Ravens so what they're one and two. Even if they lose their one and three, they're still going to be probably at the end of the you know they're going to be in that playoff, probably winning the division at towards the end of the year in December. Buffalo probably the same thing. Uh, however, uh, there's a lot to prove here for Josh Allen, uh, an unwritten story, and Bills Mafia is going to be going crazy Sunday night because I'm taking the Bills to riot into Baltimore and take them down. And then moving to Monday Night Football, you got two games this week, 0-3 Titans, 1-2 Dolphins. It's pretty much 0-0 versus 0-0 at this point because both these teams need a win. Dolphins maybe without Skylar Thompson in this one. And Titans have played some better football as of late. Their defense has just let them down. And will one Will Levis turnover a game is expected that'll cost you. Uh, but in this one, I don't think it'll cost you as much because you're not playing against as good of teams at this point. I know the Dolphins still have a ton of weapons, but when you don't have a quarterback, those weapons get shut down. And I think the Titans are ready to get their first win here. Yeah, I, I really hope so, especially you becoming a new Tennessee fan. Uh, I'm hoping that last week was fun and too bad. Unfortunately, they couldn't get their first win last week. I know you were uh, wanting that to happen. Uh, this week, I think they'll do it as well. Miami, like you said, they just uh, – Skylar Thompson's their quarterback. Uh, and then uh, that's about it. I, I 
it's I'm not probably saying up for this game, but I am gonna go with the Titans here. Bro, bro casually forgot that I'm a Packers fan first before Titans, but that's all right. And we'll move into oh. the next one. Um <laughs> We got the Seahawks and Lions. If you're not staying up for that game, why you're gonna miss out on this game? Lions, be Seahawks. This is probably gonna be the honestly. This is probably the best game of the week because oh, yeah. you remember last year, Seahawks came into Detroit week two, one on a walk off touchdown in OT, and you don't think Dan Campbell and those boys are still thinking about that loss? And what better way to prove it? Monday Night Football, three and zero, two and one. It's a new look Seahawks team. This defense is legit. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be enough to stop the Lions this year. The Lions have something to prove, in especially this game. And Monday Night Football in Detroit, crowd's going to be rocking. Hopefully the next day the Tigers will be playing a playoff game somewhere. And if that's the case, the city of Detroit is ready to explode. So give me the Lions here. Yeah, let's go Detroit. Give me the Lions here. Uh, Seahawks, like you said, have looked really good. And I, I'm not sure if Kenneth Walker is supposed to be back, but either way, uh, Seattle has found a stud in Zach Charbonnet as well, who has seen an increased workload with Kenneth Walker's injury and has really made the best of it. Uh, Geno Smith just throwing dimes all over the place to DK and Jackson Smith and Jigba. So this offense is really good as well. But the Lions, they're they're just that team. They're they're gonna they're gonna claw and I, and they're just gonna pull this one out. Um, it's gonna be a closer game, I think. It's gonna be right around that line. I'm going to say 26-23. And that's going to be it for our week four picks. Come back next week to see how we did on our betting picks and for the straight money lines. But until next time, the Bench Buddies are out.